Hello friends and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm a security nerd and your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting February 16th, 2015. Let's jump right in by replaying all the daily security bites from the week. Today's story talks about some scary nation-state hard drive infecting malware. This story comes from research from one of WatchGuard's partners, Kaspersky, who released a 40-some page document describing the Equation Group nation-state threat actors. This 40-some page white paper talks about a long-standing attack campaign. The campaign has been targeting over 45 countries from Russia to China to Afghanistan and so on, and has been going on allegedly since 2001. This white paper describes a whole bunch of different malware modules, things from from key loggers to USB spreaders to get past air-gapped networks and many other modules. A lot of the modules seem related to past nation-state malware campaigns like Stuxnet and even the more recent Regan. One of the equation group's most interesting modules is one that's able to overwrite the firmware of hard drives. Apparently this malware is uh, designed to recognize many different vendors' hard drives, Western Digital, Seagate, IBM, Maxter, and so on. And if it has one of those hard drives it recognizes, it can overwrite their firmware and totally take over the Windows boot process. This means reformatting, wiping the hard drive, reinstalling the operating system. All these techniques will not remove the malware from your computer. It makes it very, very hard to detect this particular malware. Now, Kaspersky just described these actors as likely coming from a nation state. However, later in the week, Reuters published an article uh, quoting an ex-NSA employee who confirmed that the NSA uses hard drive overriding techniques such as the one described in this research. So it seems like the equation group might be the NSA. In any case, it shows how advanced some of these malware techniques are becoming. And while this clearly is a nation state attack, I suspect many of these techniques are going to continue to trickle down into normal criminal malware. And this is why you can no longer rely just on signature based AV. We need more advanced techniques to catch zero day payloads before they infect our computer. Because once they've overwritten our hardware firmware, it's very difficult to get them off our systems. For today's video, I'm I'm actually going to give you a PSA or public service announcement on secure web browsing. This story actually comes from two news items from the week. During the week, we learned that two legitimate or at least somewhat legitimate websites were hijacked to serve malware. If you're a fan of Jamie Oliver, the chef, his site was serving malware, or hopefully you don't visit this site, but the adult website called RedTube was also hijacked with an invisible iframe and it too was serving malware, probably from a third party ad network. If you visit visited these sites in the past few days, you may be infected. And this is actually a very typical risk on the web right now. These are called drive-by download or sometimes watering hole attacks, where bad guys find perfectly legitimate and trusted websites that many people frequent. And they try to exploit flaws either in the site or in third-party mechanisms on the site to actually hijack those sites and force people to go to malware drive-by download sites. Now I've talked about this issue before. Some of the ways you can protect yourself or patch your systems, run anti-malware, whether it's WatchGuard gateway anti-malware or host anti-malware, or you can even use intrusion prevention because they can detect the exploits, the browser, Java, Flash, or web-based exploits these sort of drive-by download sites use. But today I wanted to share another pro tip that I think is pretty important. A lot of these drive-by download attacks rely on script. Very regularly they rely on JavaScript. A lot of browser plugins out there will block scripts like JavaScript ActiveScript Flash by default. And one of my favorite plugins is one for Firefox users called NoScript. If you use Firefox, I highly recommend NoScript. This allows you to block scripts by default, which can prevent many drive-by download attacks. But meanwhile, it gives you an easy way to turn on scripts because many legitimate sites do need to use scripts to give you some of the dynamic functions of their website. Now, if you don't use Firefox, if you use Chrome, for example, there's add-ons like safe scripting or not script or even 
a, a click to play. And also there's mechanisms that work for Internet Explorer too. In any case, if you want to stay safe while browsing online, you got to realize that even normal legitimate sites might infect you. So consider some of these browser plugins to block scripts by default. Today's story is about IBM Lenovo's Superfish, which is adware they pre-install on many of their laptops. Now installing what we call crapware, junk that vendors pre-install with many computers, is already bad enough. And Superfish is kind of gross adware. It actually follows your web connections and tries to insert ads that are customized to you. But the big issue with Superfish isn't really the fact that it's adware. It's the fact that it actually uses HTTPS decryption. It ships with a self-signed HTTPS certificate that allows it to kind of see all your HTTPS traffic and it can insert ads into that traffic as well. Furthermore, many researchers like Robert Graham looked at the Superfish program and quickly figured out the private certificate it uses, including the password it uses to sign the certificate because it's really badly designed software. So this means the actual certificate authority that this adware uses is out in the public. Any bad guy can use it to man in the middle your Lenovo computer if you have Superfish installed. Now Lenovo reacted to this by saying Superfish isn't that bad, it's just adware that you can uninstall. But I don't think they understand the problem. While you can uninstall the Superfish adware, it actually leaves this certificate in your browser setup so people can still man in the middle you if you've ever installed this certificate. Now there's good news. First of all, you can manually remove this certificate if you want to. More importantly, my suggestion is if you're a Lenovo user out there, you should adopt the imaging policy that most businesses have. When they get computers, they tend to have their own corporate Windows image, a clean install that they put on all new computers. And if you are re-imaging your software, you're getting rid of all this uh, vendor supplied crapware, which is something you should do anyways, because it usually serves no purpose. Today's story is the Great Sim Heist. This story is in another Snowden leak which comes from The Intercept. In the story, we learn based on documents and presentations that the US's NSA and the UK's GCHQ actually ran a black ops network attack against a Dutch SIM card manufacturer called Gemalto. A SIM card, by the way, is a subscriber identity module. It's that tiny little card you put into your mobile phone or your wireless device. And Gemalto makes about two billion of these cards a year, which they sell to AT&T, T-Mobile, and many other uh, cell phone providers out there. And these cards actually have digital circuitry and very specific private public keys. These are the cards uh, your telco uses to identify you and to encrypt your communications and stuff. Obviously, law enforcement wants to intercept phone calls and getting warrants and getting uh, vendors to cooperate and hand over keys is hard. So apparently, according to these documents, the NSA and GCHQ decided to stock employees at the Gemalto SIM card company and use all the information they gathered to eventually do a cyber attack and get bulk access to the keys, the digital keys used for many, many SIM cards. And this ultimately means that on a whim, they can basically intercept data from any phone. In fact, if they've intercepted communications from phones before, but they were encrypted, if they have these keys, they now can decrypt those uh, communications after the fact. So this is exactly what governments should not be doing. This is massive state surveillance. Let's for a second just assume that the NSA and GCHQ has our best interest in mind and they're just going to use this sort of power to go after bad guys. Just the fact that they still have the power to intercept anyone's communications on a whim without a warrant, without any clear checks and balances, and without letting know this private Dutch company that they stole a whole bunch of private data just blows my mind. I recently wrote an article you can find on Dark Reading talking about how governments are making us less secure. And I think this is a perfect example of just why that's happening. Now, unfortunately, there's nothing I can recommend you do for this. You know, if a government does have the key to your SIM card, at best, you can use third-party uh, programs to encrypt your communications, maybe use encrypted Skype connections. But it's definitely a story you need to know about, so I shared it.
Well, that's all for this week. I hope you found it informative. And you might have noticed there's only four stories this week because Monday was a U.S. holiday. But that's not to say security news stopped. There is plenty of other interesting stories, too. That's why I suggest you subscribe to our blog. You can find it at blog.watchguard.com or watchguardsecuritycenter.com. And in the post associated with this video, I'll have a long reference section sharing all kinds of extra stories you might be interested in. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. And be sure to also subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want the videos immediately. You can find that at CoreyNockDIR. Thanks for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.